Good morning, class. Good morning, Brother Keith. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School's the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. Uh, words matter. Uh, Jesus is called the high priest of our confession, of what we say. He works with our words, what we say, when they're in agreement with what he said. And so that's one of the reasons why we, from the very beginning, we start off the class with saying, I'm, I'm going to be fed and I'm going to grow stronger and I'm learning and developing. Uh, no need in uh, taking the first half of the class to warm up and then decide, yeah, I think maybe I'm getting something. <laughs> Go ahead and, and release faith for it with your words. So uh, turn everything else off. Get your Bible, something to make a note with. We saved you a seat right here. Come on into the, the class with us and give it your full attention and you will be changed for the better. Father, we thank you for your word. Your words have the power to change us from uh, glory to glory into what we behold uh, in you. We ask for the utterance, the direction, the examples, the, the changes, the steps, whatever you know we need, and we purpose to be doers of it. Thank you for working in us mightily and powerfully by your word and your spirit and giving us victory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Look again in Psalm 23, our main text in our series that we're calling Faith for Provision. And we're asking and answering the question, is it God's will for us to have abundance of every good thing, including material things, things and finances? Is it God's will? Is it always God's will? Is it God's will for everybody? And uh, people imagine they answer these questions or a lot of people just surrender that you can't know. They don't know and no one can know. But if that's the position you're in, you're absolutely faithless where provision is concerned. You can have no faith for it. Faith comes by hearing, yeah. hearing the Word of God. Faith in God comes by hearing what God said. And each area uh, is, is uh, directional and specific, like we mentioned before. You might have great faith that you're saved and your sins are washed away and you have faith in the blood of the Lamb and that your name's in the Lamb's book of life. You might have strong faith in that and have no faith at all for your bills to be paid. And that would be because you've heard something about this, about your, the, the blood of the lamb and your sins washed away, but you either haven't heard anything that God wants your needs met, or you even heard that maybe he doesn't sometimes. Maybe it's his will that some people were born uh, poor, and, and that's just his, we don't understand his plan. And one of the biggest mistakes that so much of the church-going world is making with this is believing the lie that everything that happens is God. That is actually a doctrine of demons. Now, I know that's, a, that, you know, and you, you see how adamant people, oh, God is in control. Of what? Of you? He's controlling everything you think and say and do? Are you actually going to attribute, attribute everything you've said and done to him? I don't think so. <laughs> and so if that's not the case, then there's a lot of other things he's not controlling. Now, if you want to talk about his ultimate plan and will, it's going to happen with or without you and me. But if you want to talk about, now he's got to have somebody to use, but it doesn't have to be you or me. He could use somebody else. I'm not letting somebody else take my place. I'm, I'm volunteering and staying on track. How about you? Yes. But if you want God's will, you have to find out what his will is. And then you have to do it. 
Go with me to uh, Ephesians, if you would, while we're talking about this. Ephesians, the, uh, the fifth chapter. He said in verse 14, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Now, the, the people he's talking to are his people. Because they're not dead spiritually. They're just asleep. But you know, somebody who's in a deep, deep sleep, especially from a distance, they, they can look the same as a dead person. There's no movement. There's no activity. Nothing going on. So you can be a Christian. You can be born again, but be acting just like a spiritually dead person. No activity detectable. But he said, wake up and arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but what? <laughs> Understanding what the will of the Lord is. Can I understand what God's will is? He told me to. Right? How can I understand what the will of the Lord is if it's too mysterious and beyond me to know? See, you, what you're running into is the Word of God versus religious men's ideas. And what has happened is religious tradition and, and, and theological suppositions have replaced New Testament in many denominations, in many churches, in, in much preaching and teaching. Can I know, can I find out what God's will is? He, does he expect us to find out and know? Well, why did he give us this book? And why did he give us the author of the book to live in us and explain the book to us? Now, how much more help do you need? Right? giving you the book with all the answers and the author to accompany the book and explain the book to you. How much more help do you need? <laughs> if you need more help than that, you ain't trying. <laughs> Don't be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Back up to Romans, the 12th chapter, similar thing here. Romans 12, verse 2, Romans 12, 2, be not conformed to this world. Are we as believers supposed to think differently from the ungodly, unbelieving world? Yes. Yeah. This word conform describes molding, you know, pressing you into the same mold. And, you know, whether you call it peer pressure or any other kind of a pressure, there is a, a real pressure from the ungodly world around us for us to act just like them, think like them, believe like them, talk like them, but we cannot, we must not. They are doing things without God. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind why? To what end? That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Can I know the will of God? Yes. Can I find out the will of God? Yes. yes. Is everything the will of God? No. Is every, if everything that's happening is the will of God, these scriptures don't make any sense. Hmm? If everything that's happening is the perfect will of God, I don't need to pray to find out the will of God. I just need to wake up and see what happens. Right? I don't need to develop in spirituality and discern. I don't need to study the Word to try to find out what the will of God is and what isn't the will of God because nothing's going to happen today that's not the will of God. It's all the will of God. No, that's a lie. That's contrary. I already read you two passages in the New Testament, and there are many, many more. When you're born again, that's not the end, that's the beginning. From the moment you're born again, 
You are made in the likeness and image of God on the inside. Old things are passed away. All things are become. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. But your head is still your head. And you need to immediately begin to fill it with what God said. So that you are instead of being conformed to everything around you. We are transformed by what? The renewing of our mind, what's the result of that? So we can prove, and prove has to do with testing and and discriminating and discerning what's the good and perfect, acceptable will of God. Said out loud, everything happening happening. is not the will of God. I'm told. To find the will of God. I can know the will of God. Hallelujah. I can discern the will of God and the will of the Father by searching what he said and by listening to it and listening to his spirit who is the author of what I'm reading here. And what we're seeing is that God's will is always abundant provision. Always has been. Always will be. Now you know I, I've been in this now for over 40 years. And, and so some of these things I'm talking to you about. I've been over and over again. And I, my wife and I talk about this. God is so good to us. We have everything we need in the churches. We have everything we need in the broadcasts. All our bills are always paid. We're never behind. Come on now, listen to this or not. I am not bragging on me or us. I am not claiming that we are superior intelligence and such business minds and have always done everything perfectly. We've made plenty of mistakes. But the biggest thing going on is that I, we have become completely convinced God's will. Hallelujah. Is for us to have our needs met. If something comes up that we were looking short I would immediately go, uh-uh, something's not right. Something's not right. And it's not on God's end. I know it's God's will for all of our needs to be met. Now, you don't have that settled just because you heard me say it twice. Huh? Which is why we're going to be here. Reason number four. Number five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Thirty reasons at least. So you're going to have to keep coming back. Huh? Just keep coming back. Why? Because, first of all, is it just Brother Keith's thinking and ideas, or are we reading scriptures? And if it's scripture, if it's the Word of God, you, then you've got to make a decision every time you hear it. Okay, do I believe it or not? Do I believe it or not? Because sometimes old tradition will rise up, just like that woman said, well, it's just like the song says. Well, forget the song. <laughs> How about the Word? Yeah. And if you will let that word come into you, his word is incorruptible seed. It'll get down in you and then it'll start to expand and develop. It'll put roots down in you and then it'll begin to spring up in you and it will expand in you. And the result, the part of the fruit of that is light and life and the truth that makes you free And the faith, hallelujah, it'll just begin. And what it'll do, it'll push out unbelief. It'll push out wavering and vacillating and not being sure. It'll push out doubt. And it'll push out fear. And you'll get to the place where you no longer lie awake and wonder we will be able to make it to the end of the month. You'll get to the place where you just expect... All your needs to be met. It's a wonderful way to live. I said it's a wonderful way to live. Not to say you'll never make a mistake. But if you do, you repent. You get it fixed. You get back on track. And your needs continue to be met. Can anybody say I believe that? I believe that. All right, all right. So his will is knowable. And his will is doable. God is not unreasonable. We, we saw reading in Matthew 7 
that Jesus said, ask. And he said, what father or who among you, if his son asked for bread, would he give him a rock, a stone? And the obvious answer is no good father's going to do that, that their child is hungry and they got bread and, and their child goes, oh, wow, great. Daddy's got bread. I'm so hungry. Would you give me some bread? And, and daddy says, well, actually, I'd like for you to have this rock. <laughs> now, we're laughing, but I didn't bring this up. This is what Jesus said. That's right. And what, what's, what's, what is he doing? He's drawing a contrast and a comparison. And he's teaching us about the Father. And you remember, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so he goes on to say, he said, what man is there among you? This is Matthew 7, 10. If he asks for a fish, will his father give him a, a serpent, a snake? Well, what is that? You, the, the son uh, or daughter uh, sees the father just has a, a fresh catch of a amazing, beautiful, let's say, swordfish <laughs> and got some on the grill and it looks beautiful, and it's seasoned, and it's nice. And they say, oh, Daddy, could I have a, a piece of swordfish? And he says, uh, I know it smells good. I know you're hungry. But look here. I got a rattlesnake. <laughs> a big, poisonous rattlesnake. And I would like for you to have this rattlesnake. <laughs> now, he may bite you. And you may die. But it's a gift from me. Now, now, some of you are laughing, but that is what is taught in seminaries and churches. That we may think we need something to eat or some new clothes or, or some money to, to pay our, our, our rent or whatever. But, you know, God may give you a rock. And it may seem hard, but he has a reason. And you won't understand it. And it's mysterious and junk. Huh? Lies. Where did they get that? They didn't get it from Jesus. They didn't get it from the book of Acts. Come on, are y'all listening? Where did they get that? The devil worked that in. To teaching and preaching and doctrine in the church. We're warned about this. You read Timothy and other places, we're warned that in the last days, there would be doctrines of demons. And, and, and these are not just things that are taught in Satanist churches. <laughs> these are things that are taught across the pulpits of supposed to be Christian churches. You might say, well, what, how can I, this sounds dangerous. It is. It can rob you. How can I know the difference? You got to keep coming to faith school. And you need to get in a good church that teaches not doctrine, you know, these kind of doctrines and opinions, but the word, the word. And you need to get yourself in the word so you can know it for yourself. And everything you hear preached or taught or every book or every broadcast or TV show, you better check everything they say, including me, everything they say, you need to be asking, where's that at? Where's that at in the Bible? Where's that at in Scripture? And in the mouth of two or three witnesses in Scripture, let every word be established. No. No. He's saying, what father would do that? Give a rock to a hungry child when he's got good, hot, fresh bread there. Give a, a snake, a serpent, to a, a child desiring a fish, something good to eat, when he's got plenty of good fish. But no, no. In his mysterious will, he's going to give you something that will hurt you. I have heard all manner of things. God, people say, well, you know, I was in a car wreck and it about killed me. And, but, you know, God was teaching me some things. Couldn't you have learned better at home without getting in a wreck? I mean, did you have to be in the wreck? Is God using Stealing, killing, and destroying to teach us things when Jesus said it was the thief doing it. Got to get it straight. 
Got to get it. The devil is very tricky in these things. Oh, he's subtle. The way he comes about with these doctrines, he doesn't come across as the devil. He comes across as an angel of light, as a messenger of God. And you never met anybody more religious than the devil. He has perfected being religious and he has deceived billions. Doesn't have to be you. I said, it doesn't have to be you. Somebody said out loud, I'm not ignorant ignorant. of Satan's devices. devices. God's truth, truth. his word word makes me free. free. And I believe believe God's a good God. God. He's a good father. father. And he gives good things things. to me. me. If you keep reading, Jesus said, what man is there among you? If his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? What's the answer to that? No good dad's going to do that. Or if he asks fish, will he give him a serpent? No good father's going to do that. If you then, being evil, you know, natural people that have made all kinds of mistakes, that love their kids and give good gifts to your children, this is Matthew 7, 11, how much more, not, not as good as your good daddy, Much more, much more what? That your Father, which is in heaven, will give good things, not to those that don't believe He's good, but to those that believe in His goodness enough to ask for good things. Said out loud, my Father father is in heaven, heaven. and He gives good things. To those that ask him. him. And I ask him. him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now this this is supposed to be something ongoing. A way of life. All through your day. All through your night. You come across something that's good. That you see you need. Or even you just won't. But it's good. You should ask for it. Ask for it. Phyllis, my wife and I, we do this all the time. We'll see something. Oh, the, the, the church needs that. The ministry needs that. We'd like to have that. As long as it's a good thing, we'll stop right there a lot of times. Sometimes catch hands and go, Father, you said if any two of us agree as touch anything we ask, it'd be done for us. And so we ask for one of these. <laughs> we ask for some of this. We ask for this. And every time we do that, it might not happen the next day. It might not happen the next week. But every time we've done it, it's come to pass. I'm talking about, you know, small things, big things, medium-sized things. Now, we don't ask if we're not sure if there's something good or we'd even want it. But once you get settled, yeah, yeah, we want that. We ought to have that. Then go ahead and ask for it. Go ahead and ask for it. I mean, think about the Lord's Prayer. Give me this day. (laughs) Everything I need, my daily bread, every day, each day. Go to Luke, if you would, the 12th chapter. What are we talking about, class? We are sure it is God's will for all of us to have abundant provision all the time. A lot of people don't believe it. I can't control what they believe and don't believe. But I've I've settled it in my heart and mind because I've seen it from the Word, and I see it in our lives. Luke 12, 29, or excuse me, let's start with verse 30, because he, he was talking about not worrying about it. Verse 30, all these things the nations of the world seek after, but your Father knows you have need of these things. He didn't say you don't need them. He said, your Father knows you need them. Say it out loud, my Father knows I need things. <laughs> Isn't that what Jesus said? My father knows that I have need of, of these things. And, and he was talking about what you wear, where you live, uh, you know, what you eat and drink, all those kind of things, if you look at the previous verses. Verse 31, rather seek the kingdom of God and all these what? Things, things, things shall be added to you. He's not talking about rewards after you get to heaven. 
He's talking about things down here. And verse 32, fear not, little flock. It is who? Your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. (sighs) Not just something to wear. Not just something to eat. Jesus went widescreen. <laughs> he said, your father knows you need all these things. And so, you know, you, he's talking about he, asking him, seek the kingdom of God first. And then he went on to say, your father wants you to have the whole thing. It's as good. It pleases him. He enjoys. Does that sound like a good daddy? He enjoys giving you the whole kingdom. You want to make God happy? You want to make your father happy? Let him bless you. Let him pour out on you all the things you need and even good things to desire. And our time's up again. Flew by, didn't it? Come back next time. We're going to learn even more about the provision of our good God. Sure have enjoyed being with you again this week. At the end of the week, I always like to uh, speak over, pray over our partners. I know many of you uh, pray for us, so into this, and so it gives us a right to release our faith. Uh, God is the Father who takes care of us, and even if you've made some mistakes, He's a merciful Father. So let's believe for provision for businesses, whatever your, your job is, or to catch up and get ahead. Father, I speak over those who are joined with us in this ministry. And I I, I break the power of lack and, and, and want from over them, command every evil spirit to stop in their working to steal, kill, and destroy. And we ask for mercy, Lord, and grace and restoration in finances and for their businesses and for their jobs. We ask for mercy and full restoration to get caught up and to get ahead, and that it might be a witness and glory to you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Uh, No matter how it's been, it can turn around so quickly. God's done it for us. He'll do it for you. Let us know about the good report and give God all the glory. We'll see you soon back here in Faith School. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today. But you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.